Fishing an extra long, delicate dry fly leader definitely has some advantages, but it also comes with some challenges. And when I say long, I mean over 20 feet. That's over twice the length of a normal fly rod. However, some rivers and some fish require a much more delicate and difficult presentation in order to catch them. And that's where this long leader comes into play. A couple years ago, me and my buddy Devin Olson were on the Green River filming one of our instructional film projects. Devin is a master at picking apart fisheries and finding the best way to catch these fish. For two days, I sat behind a lens watching Devin work upstream, slowly, methodically, like a blue heron, picking off fish after fish with this method. And these fish are not easy to catch. To say that they're picky and educated is an understatement. This is a water type where people are walking by every day of the year. They see these fish, they cast these fish, but rarely catch them. In fact, for years I've been coming over and fishing the green, these same sections of river, and I have struggled. So to watch Devin systematically work over these fish was an eye-opening experience. So it's been a couple of years, but Devin and I are headed back to the green, only this time I get to join in the fun. We're going to sight fish these shallow glides to these picky fish with this long leader system and see what the green has in store for us. One of the coolest things about fishing the green in the summertime is that there will be PMDs, caddis, sallies, and even cicadas all on the water at the same time. With all of these bugs around, the fish have a ton of options and they're very active in their feeding. It's a magical time to be on the river. When sight fishing and wading the green, you don't cast until you see a fish. And the goal is to catch them on dry flies utilizing this long leader system. But not every fish will eat a dry fly, and that's okay. And when you come across the fish that's being snobby, you simply clip off that dry fly and tie on a single lightly weighted nymph. It's a little tricky. We're not fishing a dry dropper or an indicator rig. The only visual indications come from the fish. Unless you're lucky enough to get a glimmer of your fly as it's drifting downstream. You're looking for any visual indication from the fish, whether it's a slight turn, whether they chase your fly, or as Devin calls it, the white wink, which is when they simply open up their mouth and allow the fly to slide in. No matter the reaction, when you see that fish move, set the hook. As fun as it is to catch fish on nymphs like this, our objective is still to catch them on dry flies. Fortunately for us, this time of year, that's typically not a problem. 